Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at George Hennard who committed the Lubbies shooting, the second worst shooting in the history of Texas and at the time it was the deadliest massacre in the United States of America until the Virginia Tech shooting. Also a massive shout out to Alraxi Ray for recommending this case. George Pierre Hennard was born to a Swiss-born surgeon, Georges, and an antique dealer named Gloria Jean on the 12th of October 1956 in Sayre, Pennsylvania. Hennard had two younger siblings, a brother, Alan Robert, and a sister, Desiree. His family was wealthy and his father worked at army hospitals, with Hennard moving across the United States of America for his father's work. The family settled down in New Mexico, with his father working at the White Sands Missile Range, a military testing area operated by the United States Army. Fellow classmate in grade school, Lou Catoggio, painted the picture of an outgoing kid who was good looking and everyone thought he was cool. But that changed in 1962 when Hennard was six years old and he got into a fight with his father, with his father mauling him in a fight. After this, Gattogio noted that Hennard became completely introverted. Hennard attended Mayfield High School, one of four public high schools in Las Cruces, New Mexico, the second largest city in New Mexico. Throughout his time in high school, neighbor Paul Crowair noted that you never saw him with girls. He never hung around with anybody. His parents never did care and were hardly ever around. Upon graduation from high school at the age of 18 in 1974, Hennard enlisted into the United States Navy but was honorably discharged in 1977. He then worked as a United States Merchant Marine and was based in the Gulf of Mexico until 1981. Following this, he undertook 37 overseas voyages during his time as a Merchant Marine. He was described as a reclusive loner who was obsessed with his yard being neat and a clean pickup and belligerent with a strong hatred of women, albeit the reason for his hatred of women was never determined. A former roommate in Temple, Texas, Jamie Dunlap, noted he hated blacks, Hispanics and gays. He said women were snakes and always had derogatory remarks about them, especially after fights with his mother. In 1981, Hennard was caught with a marijuana cigarette while in El Paso, Texas, but was not charged or convicted for possession of marijuana. In May 1982, his Siemens papers were temporarily suspended after he was in a racial argument with a shipmate. In 1983, his parents divorced, with his father moving to Houston, Texas, and his mother moving to Henderson, Nevada. He would settle down in Belton, Texas, and lived in a mansion paid for by his father. This mansion was frequently empty. In the late 1980s, he worked in San Pedro, Texas as part of the United States Merchant Marine, and he was described by union organizer Pete Martinez as a loner who didn't befriend anyone while in San Pedro. He often stayed in Hotel Cabrillo in San Pedro, and one maid said that he was weird but nice. Throughout late 1989, 1990, and 1991, Hennard worked various odd jobs across the United States of America, including in South Dakota, residing part-time at his mother's house in Henderson, in a red brick colonial home, as well as living in Belton. Neighbors in Belton described him as quick to anger, including yelling at a small boy who went looking for his baseball glove on his property, and he also played loud rock music but refused to turn it down. By 1991, he was working in Killen, Texas. He owned a 1987 blue Ford Ranger pickup truck with 79-year-old Geraldine Knight who lived two doors from Hennard, noting that he took great care of his truck. He changed his name from George Pierre Hennard to George Joe Hennard. In February 1991, he purchased a Glock 17, as well as Rugger P89 9mm pistols at Mike's Gun House in Henderson, Nevada. In June 1991, he started stalking 24-year-old Jill Fritz and 19-year-old Jana Yemingen, 
who lived two blocks away from him. He sent them a five-page letter in June 1991 stating, Please give me the satisfaction of someday laughing in the face of all those mostly white treacherous vipers from those two towns who tried to destroy me and my family. You think the three of us can get together someday. The two towns that he was referring to were Killen and Belton. He also stated that he was truly flattered knowing I have teenage groupie fans. He signed the letter, Love you, George. Your fan, George. Fritz and Jemigan alerted the Belton police about the letter and Hennard's behaviour, but this came to nothing. Captain Cecil Cosper of the Belton Police Department later stated that there was not enough evidence to arrest Hennard for harassing Fritz and Jemigan. In early October 1991, he collected his paycheck from a cement company in Copperus Cove, Texas, and announced that he was quitting. He told co-worker Bubba Hawkins that certain women in Belton had been giving him problems, and he kept saying, watch and see, watch and see. On his 35th birthday, on the 15th of October 1991, he spoke to his mother on the phone. Later that evening, he ate a cheeseburger and French fries at a fast food restaurant outside of Belton. During television coverage of the Clarence Thomas confirmation hearings, the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States of America, who assumed office under President George H.W. Bush on the 23rd of October 1991, when American lawyer Anita Hill came onto the television accusing Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment during his time as a supervisor at the United States Department of Education and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, Hennard shouted, You dumb bitch! You bastards opened the door for all the women! Hennard had gone to see the movie The Fisher King, a 1991 drama movie starring the legendary Robin Williams, which featured a shooting scene at a New York restaurant. While it was speculated initially by police that this may have been an incentive for Hennard committing the massacre, this remains speculative at best. On the 16th of October 1991, Boss's Day, Hennard stopped at 5.30am at the Leon Heights Drive-In Convenience Store in Belton, Texas, where he usually had breakfast. Cashier Mary Mead noted that he seemed different. Mead was usually scared of Hennard, but he seemed calm and almost friendly. Despite attending the convenience store for over a year, this was the first time she could remember seeing him friendly and calm. He bought an orange juice, a sausage and biscuit sandwich, a candy bar, donuts, and a newspaper. He then drove 17 miles to Keelan, Texas, and drove his 1987 blue Ford Ranger pickup truck through the plate glass front window of a Lubby's cafeteria at 12.39pm. Survivor Mary Roberts stated that she initially believed that Hennard's brakes had given out. Being boss's day, the restaurant was unusually busy with 150 patrons inside the restaurant. Now known as Lubby's, Lubby's Cafeteria is a chain of cafeteria-style restaurants based in Houston, Texas. It currently has 6,133 staff based at 47 locations, all of which are in Texas. At the time, the restaurant was far larger, operated across multiple states, and operated 151 restaurants. Inside his Ford Ranger and holding his Glock 17 and Rugger P89 pistols, he began firing on employees and patrons, with his first victim being 48-year-old veterinarian Michael Griffith from Copus Cove, Texas. Hennard then got out of a truck and yelled, All women of Keelan and Belton are vipers. This is what you've done to me and my family. This is what Bell County did to me. This is payback day. Hennard circled around the cafeteria, selectively picking his victims, stating to women, you bitch, before fatally shooting them. Women hid underneath a bench near the serving line of a restaurant, with Hennard stating, hiding from me, bitch, before shooting them dead. He then approached Steve Ernst, who was hiding under a table before shooting at him. Ernst rolled over, holding his stomach, and managed to survive. He then approached a woman whose identity was not revealed, who was holding a baby in her arms, and he stated to the woman, You with the baby, get out before I change my mind. The woman with the baby then ran out of the Lubby's cafeteria. Hennard then shot at Ernst's wife in the arm, who survived, and then killed Ernst's wife's mother, 70-year-old Venice Hennehan, from Metz, Missouri. 
Hannah had approached 28-year-old Tommy Vaughan, who worked in a built-in repair shop, with Vaughan seated in the rear of a cafeteria. Vaughan was huddled on the floor and threw himself through a window, allowing a third of the people in the cafeteria to escape through the window. Vaughan would always deny that he was a hero, even though his decision saved numerous lives, and he became something of a celebrity, appearing on Oprah and meeting the then Vice President Dan Quayle. When police jumped through the window that Hennard had driven his truck through, Hennard engaged in a brief shootout with police before retreating to an area between the two bathrooms of a restaurant, with people hiding in the bathrooms and having blocked the doors to the bathrooms. Hennard was wounded by police officers Alk Morris, who was Hennard's neighbour, as well as Ken Olson, and repeatedly ordered to surrender by police, but he refused, saying that he was going to kill more people. He was then shot twice in the abdomen, and having depleted his ammunition, he shot himself in his head with the final bullet, killing himself. In the deadliest shooting at the time in the United States of America, a combined 23 people had been killed. The entire massacre had lasted 10 minutes. These were 57-year-old Patricia Carney from Belton, Texas, 48-year-old Jimmy Carufas from Austin, Texas, 62-year-old Kreimhild Davis from Keelan, Texas, 43-year-old Stephen Doddy, 71-year-old Alfonso Garcia, known as Al, 67-year-old Ursula Garita, 33-year-old Deborah Gray, and 48-year-old Michael Griffith as well as 55-year-old Ruth Pujol, 36-year-old Suzanne Rashot, 29-year-old John Romero Jr., and 33-year-old Thomas Simons. All of these individuals were from Coparis Cove, Texas. He also shot 63-year-old Claudine Humphrey from Martin, Texas, 30-year-old Sylvia King from Keelan, Texas, 65-year-old Zona Lynn from Martin, Texas, 41-year-old Connie Peterson from Austin, Texas, 55-year-old Glenn Arvel Spivy, as well as 44-year-old Nancy Stansbury, both from Harker Heights, Texas, 35-year-old George Hennard from Syria, Texas, 64-year-old Ivor Juanita Williams from Temple, Texas, and 45-year-old Olgika Taylor, James Welsh, and Lula Welsh, both 75, with a trio from Waco, Texas. 70-year-old Venice Humphrey was the only person murdered who was from outside of Texas, with Humphrey from Metz, Missouri, who was in Keelan for a wedding. None of the restaurant's 45 employees were killed. The town of Keelan was in shock and disbelief after the massacre, with Major Blair, who was the mayor of Keelan, stating that while the city would become stronger from the massacre, they never truly overcame it. Flags were flown at half-staff, with councillors, clergy and volunteers consoling residents. Al Morris noted that the situation reminded him of his service during the Vietnam War as a crew chief mechanic and door gunner, and he suffered flashbacks for one year following the massacre, with a constant VCR in his head the first month after the massacre, with bodies lying on the floor. Equally, the family of Hennard was highly lost and confused, with his mother telling the Los Angeles Times, This is so frightening, so devastating. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I'm interested in one thing, this tragedy and the death of my beautiful son. An anti-crime bill was scheduled for a vote in the US House of Representatives on the 17th of October 1991, the day after the massacre. Following the massacre, Thomas Chester Edwards, known as Chest, who represented Waco from 1991 until 2011, abandoned his opposition to part of the bill. The bill would have banned some of the weapons used by Hennard. However, this bill did not come to fruition and would not pass the US House of Representatives. Hennard was cremated with his ashes scattered at sea. On the 26th of October 1991, Hennard's sister Desiree Hennard told the Philadelphia Daily News that Hennard's family had no idea what he was planning but insisted that he was not motivated by a hatred of women. Former Republican State Representative of Texas for District 54, Bell, Burnett and Lampas counties, Susanna Hupp, 
who represented the district from 1997 until 2007, survived the massacre with both of her parents killed. Hupp became an advocate of an individual's right to carry a concealed weapon following the massacre and wrote the book From Lubbies to the Legislator, One Woman's Fight Against Gun Control. On the day of the massacre, she had a .38 revolver in her car, 100 feet away from Lubby's cafeteria, but feared carrying the gun into the restaurant, as if she was caught carrying it, she may lose her chiropractor's license. The Lubby's cafeteria in Keelan would reopen five months after the massacre in March 1992, but closed permanently on the 9th of September 2000, with the 34 employees working in the restaurant at the time offered roles at other Lubby's cafeterias. The restaurant was closed due to increased competition in Keelan. The closure made national headlines due to the restaurant's association with the massacre. Today, the site of what is now the second worst shooting in Texas history is occupied by a buffet restaurant called Yank Sing Chinese Restaurant. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet, have an amazing day, and remember the truth is always more interesting than fiction.